78, GRU Augusta 59 in the women's contest as the Bobcat women prevail and move to 12 and 3 in the Peach Belt Conference. Might be too little too late to salvage their top 25 ranking as they were 24th in the country last week. And after losing on Wednesday and the vote taken today before this win, it uh, may come out a little too late for them, but uh, they might be able to bounce back in to the top 25 Division II poll next time around. That may be surprising. They may wind up uh, still in the top 25 this week. It will come out tomorrow, and we'll let you know on Wednesday. Checking out the statistics in the ball game. Georgia College shot nearly 52% from the floor in the second half. And for the ball game, 46.8%. One of the best shooting nights of the season, 29 out of 62. Bobcats were 6 of 9 from downtown in the second half. Wound up right at 50%, 10 of 20 in three ball shooting. At the free throw line, Bobcats shot 71% in the second half and 10 for 13 for the ball game at 77%. So all the shooting stats went up tonight for the GC women. Shooting stats for GRU Augusta. They shot a very tepid 22% in the second half. 6 of 27, including 0 of 7 in three ball shooting. They were 13 of 19 from the charity stripe. That's the only thing that really kept them in the ball game. They managed 19 of 55 for the contest from the floor, 34.5%. They were 4 of 16 from long range and 17 of 23 for nearly 74% at the free throw line. The scoring breaks out like this for GC. Shantiona Keys, a new season high, a new career high. 33 points for Shantiona Keys, the junior out of Roswell High School. She had 32 last year against Young Harris. 22 points for Anisha Donnelly. 17 points for Brandy McKinney, and it really drops off after that. Three points for Belinda Skosma, and three for Larice Walker. Everybody got to play, but her Hardly anybody scored for Georgia College other than Keyes and Donnelly. They had 55 of the 78 points for Georgia College. Breaking down the GRU scoring, 15 points for Jay Ashby, 13 for Becky Newhouse, and they were the only two players in double figures there. McCants had eight, seven for Rohrbach, seven also for Sykes, three apiece for Feinhart. I guess that was the only one with three points. And then two points for three different players, Mandeldov, Turner, and Griffiths with two points each. Bobcats won the rebounding battle at 40 to 34, 11 offensive, 29 defensive rebounds, led by Keyes and Donnelly sharing the rebounding honors with eight apiece. GRU Augusta really came back and got some good offensive board work. They wound up with 10 offensive rebounds and 24 defensive. Becky Newhouse had nine, so she was just one under a rebound for a double-double on the night. Bobcats credited with 20 assists in the ball game. Brandy McKinney with a career-high eight assists. Four for Larice Walker, three for Anisha Donnelly, two each for Slocum and Skosma, and one assist for Kayla Upchurch. GRU Augusta, only eight assists. Two each for Turner and for Mandel Dove and Two also for Rohrbach, one each for Ashby and Newhouse. Bobcats committed 15 turnovers, Jaguars 18. There were three blocks for each team. For GRU Augusta, a block for McCants, one for Newhouse, and one for Turner. Georgia College had three separate Bobcats with blocks. Abby Slocum with a block. Now she needs three more to tie Marquita Driscoll for fifth place all time at Georgia College. She is currently sixth and needs three more blocks to tie Quita. Another block for Walker and a block for Keys. Nine steals for Georgia College, led in that category by Brandy McKinney. And then one each for Walker, Donnelly, and Keyes. Nine steals for GRU Augusta. They were led by Becky Newhouse with three, and Mandeldov had two steals as well. So the Bobcats come away with a big win, and Coach Moe is saddled up and ready to go. <laughs> well, 
we needed a little bit of a breather after those two overtimes and uh, it was a tight ball game for about 30 minutes or so coach and then the last 10 minutes GC finally got yeah. a chance to extend things yeah I thought that uh, uh, you know GRU did a great job just uh, you know mixing it up on defense they kept us off, kept us off balance a good bit and um, that first half they hit shots you know they were getting the bank shots <laughs> you know the three-pointer bank shots and um, you know they did a good job working it inside got some offensive rebounds um, I, I thought they played really well um, that first half um, and they, in the first 10 minutes of the second half you know it was it was still a fight you know I mean, I mean they, they just kept hanging around hanging around um, you know that league <laughs> it never did feel safe <laughs> you know it never did feel safe and um, it was good to see our girls just kind of grind it out, I thought. You know, I thought we ground, grounded it out. We got the stops that we needed. Yep. Yep. You know, and that's, I know we talked about that in pregame. At, you know, at some point in time during the game, you know, there was a defining moment when you have to, you know, get consecutive stops in a row. And, and that's what happened, you know, I guess like around that 10-minute mark. Uh, you know, we got those consecutive stops in a row, and we got those scores. And um, that really helped us just open the game up, I thought. One of the better shooting nights of the whole season for GC. You had right. a great second half, Mo, over four, 50, almost 52%, nearly 47% for the ball game. So things were dropping for you. Yep. I thought we executed versus the zone very well. Uh, really worked the ball around. You know, we were sharing the basketball. You know, 20 assists is a great number for us. Um, you know, we're a really good passing team. I know it didn't seem like that at times, <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, they're, they're an unselfish group. You know, they look for each other. Um, you know, they were looking for keys. You know, she was really feeling it. They were looking for, um, you know, Brandy hit some big shots. And, you know, we just kind of, our, our goal is, you know, to work that zone inside and out. You know, let's see if we can get some in, inside touches. Um, I thought E did a good job, really was active inside that zone. Belinda, Abby. You know, they were really, we were really working the zone inside and out. And so I was proud of the girls, the way they executed, you know, down the stretch in that second half. Had to be proud of Keys also with 33. That's a new career high for her. Yeah. And uh, it, it just seemed like everything she put up was going to go down. Well, I'll tell you, Keys has been working her tail off in this gym. Um, and this, and it's a testament of just the work that she put in. Um, Keys come in here. She'll be in here tomorrow morning, probably before class, you know, getting shots up. She's going to stay after practice you know just shooting and um and, and it's it's that's that's so so good to see when um you know when when players are rewarded for their efforts right. and so you know she she was in the slump earlier this year you know uh, our last five games like three out of those five games i thought she played really really well shot the ball well so it's good to see you know keys really starting to put the ball in the hole and start to shoot it with confidence and of course she got another good game from anisha donnelly she yeah. did just about everything she could 22 points eight rebounds three assists and a steal yeah she's just so solid in there she is she is she's a tough matchup and um, E is getting where she can knock down that 17-footer and 18-footer and go right by you. So, you know, she's a tough matchup. You know, we're just trying to have her, you know, have her to have, make, make her have confidence. you got to have confidence in that 17-footer because in practice, I mean, she knocks it down on a consistent basis. Um, so, you know, just, she just got to keep shooting it with confidence and keep playing with confidence. And, it's, you know, it's kind of good to see our, our kind of our big three offensively. You know, produce you exactly know. so, yeah. and and you got some help off the bench, especially with the rebounding. Uh, you won the rebounding battle there at 40 to 34. You, uh, again, we we're worried about it with Els Camp being out, yeah. but you got some contributions from uh, several players to get some. Uh, Belinda came in, started the ball game, wound up with five rebounds. Right. Walker came up with four rebounds. Right. So everybody help chip in yeah and that's what it's about it's, it's about gang rebounding that's how we talk about gang <laughs> it's gang rebounding <laughs> we okay. have all five on the boards we just don't have that that six foot two six foot three you know a couple of those players who we can just count on to kind of eat up the glass and so you know we have to do it together we have to do it together everybody have to do their part um it's good it's always a good sign when our guards are rebounding um, and, you know, with Reese and Brandy, uh, Belinda, you're right, she did a really good job. So that's, that's always a good sign when our guards are rebounding. Well, congratulations, Maul. That's win hey, number you. 50 for you hey, here at DC. <laughs> I, I know that doesn't mean much when you, you were talking with uh, Coach Carrick there. And he yeah, that's right. It's a or, milestone, huh? There you go. Milestone for you. Many <laughs> hey. more to come. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Mo. Mo right. Smith, the head coach of the Bobcat women, as they come up with a big 78-59 win over the GRU Augusta Jaguar women. So that'll do it for our women's contest. The Bobcats shoot a very nice 47% from the floor and 50% from downtown. 10 out of 20 as the three ball shooting 
was right there for Georgia College. The story, of course, Shantiona Keys, 13 of 17 from the floor overall. She hit seven of eight three-point shooting. She did not take a free throw, wound up with 33 points in the ball game. So your final again, Bobcats win at 78-59. We'll be back to set you up for the men's contest. What a game, Nick Burgess, huh? Just an absolutely wild finish to a pretty great game. Uh, rebounds hurt the Bobcats all night, but really didn't hurt them at the end there. And uh, Ryan Blumenthal deserves special mention. He had a big, big game tonight. Joint top score for both teams. Uh, had three boards. I mean, he played incredibly tonight. So Georgia College somehow gets that last shot to go down. The uh, scoreboard is still lit, and they... Red has not gone away yet, and I'm sure that the red in uh, Dip Mitris' eyes has not gone away as yet either. It's 56-55, Georgia College with a win. They hand the Jaguars their first loss of the season in the conference as they go to 7-1 and one and drop to 14-3. and three. The Bobcats improved to 7-8 and eight and 3-5 and five in Peach Belt Conference play. And we'll be talking with Coach Sellers in just a little bit if he's got any talk left in him. A slowdown ball game for Georgia College as the Bobcats got 13 from Ryan Blumenthal, 12 from Lorenz Thomas, and 11 from Royal Thomas. And the two biggest points for Royal, the princely one, put in at the horn. Nine points for Terrell Harris, two for Kelvin Nwanzi, three for Will Clifton, and two for Bobby Armstrong. GRU Augusta had 13 points from K.J. Sherrill to lead them. Also in double figures, Devontae Thomas with 10. Seven each for Wright Nelson and for Weems. Uh, four points for Harold Doby. Four points for Boyce. Three points for Keyshawn Sherrill. And then two points for Roman Hill as Georgia College comes away with the win. 56 to 55 at the buzzer. We'll run through some more numbers after we talk with Coach Terry Sellers, who's probably still trying to exhale and uh, get get his breath and all that my goodness all that yes, all sir. that yes, well sir. let me ask was it design play or was that just what happened well it uh it was a design play and uh, i was just kidding aaron aaron um, you know robinson that uh i think we threw him off because we had our smallest guy setting the screen and uh, uh because i knew you know aaron would set a good screen and you know some of those guys but anyway of course he the uh, inbounder made a good, uh, excellent pass, and you know everything just worked out exactly how it had to. But it uh, it was a design play, and and uh, we were very fortunate. And the guys made a great play. The guys made a great play at the end. Indeed, so uh, Brian Blumenthal with a good inbounds pass got it up high, uh, catch and shoot. That's all you can do. That's all you. That's, that's all you can do. Yep. And uh, so I was. It was a great. You know, great win for us against a team that was uh, one of the top teams, I think, in the country. And and um, guys battled hard from start to finish. One of our better defensive effort, if not our best of the season, against a really good team. And uh, they, they, I don't know what the stats showed, and they might have killed us on the board, but I tell you, it was a battle. They, uh, they knew they were in a fight on the boards, and our guys were battling them all night long. And um, just really, really proud of the guys for coming in here and, and uh, being able to, you know, uh, get such a, a quality win, and uh, I think there was 37%, if I'm looking at that right, 37% from the floor, and that's the first game we've had uh, our opponent under 40 in quite a while. So, you know, the guys have been working hard on the defensive end. It, you know, paid off for us tonight. And just a total team effort. Really proud of all the guys. Had you planned on taking the shot clock down as low as we did just about every time? Because was it a slow down effort, or was that just the way it turned out? Well, it, it really was uh, the way it just, that was just the way it turned out. Uh, that's a, probably a compliment to their defense. They're not going to give me anything early and easy. you got to work for it, and you've got to show some patience because if you don't, that's exactly what good defenses want you to do is, you know, have bad shot selection. And so the guys were patient and uh, just came back and, you know, uh, no question our biggest win of this season and uh, one we certainly needed. Got 41% for the Bobcats shooting in the second half, 45% uh, for Augusta. But they, as you said, they wound up at only 37% from the floor for the whole ball game. So you're right. I think that's one of the better defensive efforts for GC. Uh, great job. Uh, finally got some uh, double digits in the rebounds on the offensive side. It was stuck at seven for the longest time. And now we got up to 11 
and a couple big important stops. A couple like we talked about, Coach. We got the stops when we needed to, turned them into points. Absolutely, and Royal got those two quick fouls, and I was really proud of Will. Uh, Will hadn't played, yep. and I think since our uh, second, maybe third game of the season, he got in, did a good job the first half. Gave us some. He's had some good practices, so. Uh, he got a chance to get on the court and do a good job for us. Uh, Brian, all the uh, guys that came off the bench, I thought Robert Armstrong uh, had some good minutes for us. And uh, Kevin, his first collegiate start, I believe, that right. was his first start, uh, you know, played pretty good post defense, and that was really key to our defensive effort. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, Royal six, uh, had six defensive boards, and I assume most all of those um, came in the second half. And uh, so he really didn't play but a minute or two the first half. Right. So that was, he came up big uh, in the second half from the rebounding standpoint and, of course, the uh, tip in at the end. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Outstanding Scott. effort for the Bobcat men as they go to 7-8, and 3-5 and five in the Peach Bell Conference as Georgia College wins at 56-55. Last second put in by Royal Thomas. They had only three-tenths of a second to get that off, and they did. And Georgia College comes away with the win. Checking out the rebounding, 39-35. Augusta with the lead there. 12 for K.J. Sherrill. He had a double-double with 13 points and 12 rebounds. Bobcats had 34 boards, led by Lorenz Thomas with eight. Royal Thomas had six. And the shooting stats, 37% for the game for Augusta. 20 out of 54. They were 5 of 15 in three-ball shooting for 33%. They hit 10 of 15 free throws for 67%. Bobcats, 23 out of 56 for 41% for the game. And 4 of 12 from downtown, also 33%. They didn't hit uh, too many free throws. They only had 10, hit only 6 for 60%. Georgia College credited with 10 assists in the ball game, 4 by Aaron Robinson. And give Blumenthal one big assist at the end. He had 2 for the ball game. 13 turnovers for GC, 14 turnovers for Augusta. They had 10 assists. They were led by Weems and Boyce with three each. Two blocks for Augusta, and both those came in the first half. Four blocks for GC. Nuanzi had three of them. Armstrong had one in the second half. Seven steals for the Bobcats, led by Robinson with three. Six steals for Augusta, and they were led in that category by Weems with two. So Georgia College trailing by one at halftime, pulls it out. 56-55, so a winning night at Centennial Center as the Bobcat women won their ball game earlier tonight, and the Bobcat men pull one out in the closing seconds. Another tough, tough ball game, and GC wins it here on MLK Day, 56-55. Back with you on Wednesday from Centennial as USC Aiken comes to town. We'll have the broadcast for you at 5.20 on Country 102, and don't forget we'll have it on the Internet and on Ustream. So for... Our technical director, Benedict Esposito, for the producer, for Nick Burgess, I'm Scott McLeod. Talk to you again on Wednesday for more Georgia College basketball on Country 102.